even in this module, I will not take you into different structures of Sukuk. Why? Because I want to make sure that you understand the true nature of Sukuk before we start exploring the possibility of understanding different structures of Sukuk. Now, we said that Sukuk is actually a hybrid instrument. It has some features of equity and some features of debt. In the past, distant past, a lot of Sukuk actually had debt like characteristics. In the recent past, we have started seeing the emergence of Sukuk which are more like equity. So, in practice, we would find a wide range of Sukuk which would exhibit different characteristics. Some Sukuk may be very close to equity, while the other Sukuk may be very cl close to debt. In fact, a lot of Sukuk issued in Malaysia, they are considered as debt-based securities even by law. Now, what is the definition of Sukuk? We looked into the word Sukuk and we said that this is a plural noun which means uh, uh, a check or an evidence of uh, something happening between two transacting parties and its singular form is called suck. Now, according to AOFI, Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions, Sukuk are certificates of equal value on a specific asset within a business, usufruct, or a business activity. A share, you know, we have shares listed on stock exchanges. A share on the other hand side is a certificate of investment of equal value in the capital of a business. So here in case of Sukuk, the reference is to an asset which is within a business or it is outside the business but it has close association with the business. The issuer may own the asset or usufruct or have leased it in or out. So, the entity which is issuing Sukuk, it may own the asset or its usufruct, its use, iski manfaat, or the issuer must have leased it in from someone or it might have leased it out to someone as well in certain cases. Depending on the nature of the asset and ownership rights associated with it, a suck may be tradable or subject to certain restrictions for secondary market trading, sale of it with discount or premium. So, this point is very important. If a suck or if a sukuk is completely like debt, then it would not be possible from a Sharia viewpoint to trade in it for a discount or for a premium. This means that if the debt is only represent the debt, then the debt is with that debt or with discount or with a higher price or with a higher price or this would involve riba. Selling debt for a discount or premium actually leads to riba, which, as you know, is prohibited. Food for thought for you before we start looking into different structures of sukuk. So, there is a party A, it owns an asset, it could be a building. This party owns this uh, building and it has rented this building to a party B. Ye ho chuka hai ke party A ki ek property hai, usne kisi ko ye kiraay par de di hoi. 
question for you i am not going to answer but question for you is can party a sell the asset to another party party c i am sure you know the answer second question can party a lease the asset to party c this is a tricky question and you might not know the answer kyunki aap ye kahenge ke party a ne to pehle hi lease pe asset ko party b ko de diya hua hai how come party a would then be able to lease the asset to another party c so my dear students this is quite possible with the consent of party b and that could be a sub lease contract governing this relationship so this kind of technicalities are rampant in the context of sukuk structures which we would be studying in next few modules